Hoes ain't shit, but bitches and tricks. And life ain't shit, but a bitch with fake tits. Fuck the government, I don't keep up with politics. And I ain't sold my soul yet. Y'all ready? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of the It's Off Safety podcast, starring, of course, me, Ed Hardy, and my homie Alec, and his girlfriend, slash significant other, Reagan. Hi, guys. Significant. Significant. <laughs> insignificant other. What would an insignificant other be? Like, your side bitch? Is yeah. That <laughs> <laughs> Petition to call side bitches insignificant You're not my others. side bitch, you're my insignificant other, duh. This is my insignificant other, this is my wife. Yeah, oh shit, that, then you really got problems. That's uh, that's grounds for the people that start swinging and stuff. Open relationships are interesting. I mean, like, more power to you, if you can do it. Right. But, like, I don't know if I could. I've, I've kind of been in one before, and it was interesting. Yeah? Yeah. It was a uh, older female, shout outs to her. Um, but yes, yeah, she just you knew know who you are. Yeah, she knew at that time in my life, I was just, I was still gonna be wild. So, the funny, the, what's interesting about it is though, there's no open side for other guys to come in. It's only, well, that was just, I guess maybe I'm selfish, but I don't think many guys are too down. Like the open relationship where you start like having other people in your sex life. Usually a guy that initiates the open relationship is definitely not open to other guys. It's just... It's always like, yeah, man, open relationship. You know, like, bring other people into the mix. And it's like, all right, this guy from work. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Brad's not fucking coming over, okay? Sorry Brad, about You it. think Brad's hot? Yeah, yeah. And then it, boom. And it's like, whoa. And then it's like, well, who are you thinking about getting? And it's like, I don't know. What's your sister doing Tuesday? <laughs> whoa. <laughs> oh, my God. That's crazy. <laughs> What do you think about that, Reagan? Uh, well, I'm glad I don't have a sister, number one. And I just think it's kind of unfair, like, skewed in guys' favor a little bit. Another form of sexism, right, I guess? Or, yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, male masculine? No, what is it? Patriarchy. The patriarchy. Oh, my gosh. The first time I heard that used in, like, some sort of setting like that was 13 fucking reasons when uh did y'all watch that that show oh my yeah God. yeah when what's her name the like uh <laughs> the student body president oh yeah was like and fuck the patriarchy and i was like oh shit okay <laughs> we are women and we are free yeah we won't be a part of the patriarchy now she i mean that's I'll, interesting that that's the first place you heard that well, I'd heard it before, but it was the first time I heard it in the context where I was like, oh, okay, that's the movement, I guess. Like, I mean, how long has that been a trend, though? I feel like it's fairly new for people to, like, for it to be just, you know, kind of like a movement. Like, for instance, with the Me Too shit, like, yeah, the shit had been going on for forever, but it only became a movement when it got hashtag Me Too, and then people got behind it you know so i feel like i feel like the whole disgust for the patri patriarchy is a fairly new trend i guess but the thought behind it was always around i guess yeah i think people are getting a little bit more bold in being against it so yeah well it's also too like with the way that technology has you know progressed and we get information a lot easier and um at a you know at a better consistency rate so people can catch on to those things like back in the day before internet somebody and before 13 reasons some girl might have fucking been at her high school shit and been like fuck the patriarchy but only like 600 people might have heard it now it's yeah. like six million people hear it i mean there's a lot of like with all these issues racism and sexism and all that Something we always know about, but uh, shit. So we're just diving into it today, I huh? So. <laughs> um, I mean, everyone knows about it, but either desensitization, uh, desensitization happens. You know, you know the word. Yeah, um, <laughs> you kind of just splur yeah. splurged it right in there. Um, but then there's like some sort of spark that like makes it to where 
either people that didn't know about it or ignoring it, like finally just can't ignore it anymore, like you know Rodney King or uh, you know Harvey Weinstein's allegations and all that. Yeah, and desensitization is that the word? How would you say that, Reagan? Right? Desensitization. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. I think. <laughs> yes, she did. Like, <laughs> fuck you, not the patriarchy. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, I don't know. I feel like with these types of issues, like, it's difficult to talk about it because, I mean, I'm noticing just because y'all brought it up, like, I just feel a little bit tense, you know, and I don't want to say the wrong thing. Um, So it's like we're desensitized to it, but at the same time, there's, like, this layer of just being, like, emotionally reactive and, like, vigilant at the same time. So it makes it really difficult, I think, to kind of bring these types of conversations that need to be had up in like places where like this you know what I mean yeah definitely where do you think and I do feel you said the emotional part of it and I think that's something that also has progressed along with the advancement of technology and gaining information people are so sensitive to things now it's like you know Back in the day, you see a woman beat her kid at Walmart and he, over some Skittles, and you're like, well... You, did you see that back in the day? <laughs> like, I did, yeah. Like, uh, at Walmart, shit, go there. I probably, I probably saw that, too. Yeah, like, <laughs> Walmart's a different place. Um, but but now, though, like, I mean, shit, you go into a Target and someone does that, and it's like fucking off with their head. It's a new video going viral on the internet. But before, that was a possibility of it going viral and it being a video. It just happened. Like, people just saw it and they're like, okay, whatever. He shouldn't have wanted those Skittles. You know what I mean? (laughs) Fuck him, right? Go get him, mom. Yeah, that's a strong parent right there. You see that? You see that, honey? If you fucking ask for a pack of Skittles, that's your next. Sit around the fire and trade stories. Hey, mine are the fly swatter. (laughs) Nothing. Mine's got tennis racket shaped ass marks on his butt. Yeah, and I think that, but honestly, I think that that's probably the key to it is being surveilled 24 7. Like, you know what I mean? You, it's like now you feel a responsibility to have that emotion, or else you're the person that you're caught on tape, like being like, yeah, fucking go you, you know what I mean? As opposed to, I take a stand for the children. <laughs> you know, like, then you're just setting yourself up to be scrutinized. And obviously, fucking nobody wants that, I guess, right? Yeah. You ever been to Walmart and not had a fucked up wheel in your cart? Oh my gosh, never. But you know who was even more fucking habitually bad at that was Kmart. Do you remember Kmart? Kmart just broke down Walmart, so. Dude, Kmart was fucking, oh my God, that was like, that was like the ratcheted of the ratchet. The ratcheted of the ratchet. It was, like, (laughs) fucking, you could tell, you could look at the buggy and know, like, fuck that, I'm just gonna use my hands. I took Kmart once, and there was a Cypress Hill CD, and the CD was not in the case. And I decided Kmart is fucking done. That's all it took. Yeah. But speaking of buggies, though, fuck Aldi's, dude. Like, why do I have to put a fucking quarter in there? Like, get, I'll, I'll give it to you. Y'all got, like, the Lamborghini of buggies. <laughs> but fuck. Like, dude. And bring my own bags, bitch. Why? Why? The environment. <sighs> oh, sure. my God. Okay. Was, uh... I bring my own bag just because I don't like to carry multiple bags up three But they sell bags there, though. That are made of paper. Bring your own. <laughs> I almost have a panic attack every time I go to Aldi. Like, I drive halfway there and I realize I'm like, fuck, I'm out of quarters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> like, I'm it's like I'm only getting four things now. Fuck, shit. Call up Bay. Yo, all right, so look, is it going to be green beans or mashed potatoes? I can only walk out with so much today. I went the other day and I was like, shit. I was like, I was going to ask someone for their cart. And I was like, that's their hard-earned quarter, though. I can't take that from them. <laughs> so I walk in there. And I'm just like, I grab a zucchini and a loaf of bread. And I think of the eight more things I need to get. And I just go, I can't do this. What I, what, I, <laughs> what I thought about doing, though, was I saw the cart. You know, that the, the wheelchair cart that you, you uh, skewed around in. Oh, dude. And I was like, you know, no, no quarters, no restrictions on that one. I thought about it. But here's the thing. I wasn't going to 
ride around on it. You know, I don't want to look like an asshole. So you're gonna push I'd be, it. I push it. I was gonna. I was gonna instead of pretending riding around, I was gonna push it and pretend that I was talking to someone that wasn't there. So then I'm not an asshole abusing the cart. Mm. I'm insane and I'm pushing around my ghost of a grandpa. And or you're just a just good. Avoid you, or so. you're just a good friend. You have a handicap, invisible friend. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, but have you seen that um, that landfill in Murfreesboro? Walter we'll call Hill. It? Yes. Yeah. That is why you should buy reusable bags. You just have to buy them one time. Dude, one I mean, time. I got a bag. I feel you, but I get all this landfill. <sighs> it's going straight to the trash mountain. And it's just three things. I mean, shit. Trash mountain's an attraction though. At this I point. didn't make it though. <laughs> Take you know what I mean? Like. Wait, I'm pretty sure that uh, Gatorade's a product of Coke. I'm pretty sure that this is somewhat biodegradable. You know what my beef is, though? Maybe Everyone's not. like, cut your rings on your six-packs, otherwise the turtles will be choking. I'm like, why are we throwing this shit in the fucking ocean, then? Yeah, that, see, there you go. That's that's a greater fucking point. Well, they're not, they're not throwing it in there. It's just kind of like they do a Shucky. shitty job. They do a shitty job of getting it where it's supposed to go, and it falls off, and then boom. Have you ever heard of people putting empty yo play cups, like the ones with this that are like shaped like that? The glass ones? No, the like plastic like yogurt cups in their yard to like trap animals and kill them. Like no. animals they don't want. No. Yeah. I guess that's just something we do out in the sticks where I'm from, but what do they do? <laughs> what animals are they catching with like, a yogurt cup? Like skunks and shit. Skunk how are they catching a skunk? Like, oh, yeah, oh raccoons. they're using it as bait. Yeah. Oh okay. it's like it's like yogurt. It's good. And they're like thinking they're getting a little snack, but Oh, then they become skunk meat. Who's who the fuck? why would you trap a skunk though? Like I don't know. Just for game? This is fun, let's get a skunk. You better keep it as a fucking pet. If you ever capture a skunk, if you eat it, wow. Okay, well, tells me a lot about you, but fucking, why? Yeah, I don't know. There's a bunch of shit. Like, I get fishing, you know what I'm saying? Catch them fish, eat it, you know what I'm saying? Like, fish don't have feelings. Really? That's what Nirvana said, so I guess it's true. Oh, that's gotta be right, then. <laughs> shit. But, I never even thought about, the fucked up thing is when I first went fishing, I never even thought about the fish and what it went through. I was always concerned about hooking the little worm. I'm like, this poor little guy didn't do anything. Like, why am I just about to fucking put this hook through him? And then my grandpa, that's when he gave me the, uh, rest in peace, by the way, my my grandfather. Uh, he said, Every, everything on this earth has a purpose. This worm's purpose was to be hooked and ate by that fish and I was like fuck alright well I, I have to talk it's... to God about that one hey my purpose is kind of shit <laughs> oh shit well you know a lot of humans is though is overanalyzing things and think. I think our biggest problem is social media and shit like that we have this we have this shit that goes into our subconscious mind of like what we're supposed to be doing, projected doing by a certain time, and if you're not, you're a fucking failure. Mm -hmm. You know, and that shit just is, it's just as fucking fake as like Santa Claus delivering presents to everybody in the world on one night. You know what I mean? Like, you don't have to believe in it, but. I guess sometimes there's a benefit to believing in it, maybe, but because it gives you more drive and ambition, et cetera. But at the same time, it probably negates creativity from you because there are no bounds and time limits on that. You know what I mean? Damn, I'm getting deep with this shit. But that's because I've got a birthday coming up and I feel like I'm getting old as shit. How old are you going to be? Hmm. 20. <laughs> you know, in Japan, uh, the suicide rates went down when coronavirus happened because they're able to take a break from work because that's how fucked work culture is there. Dude, that makes so much sense. It's like a pandemic happened and threw the world for a 180, and that fucked with them less than just like. Why you say one, 180, not like. The, oh, I, I got you, because then it would come full circle, right? <laughs> yeah, it's still fucked. Okay, so it stopped in, in the rotation. But, 
Yeah, dude, that shit sucks, man. Like, fucking... Given, like I said, I'm all about the eight-year-old boy trying to hustle for a buck, but <laughs> the working conditions and shit over there, like, like, fucking... Why can't it just be like America? Go get your paper route, you know? You control your own hours. You start your own business. You know what I mean? They're like, fuck that, dude. Why can't people not be assholes? Mm. Imagine That's a being good question. Imagine being a fucking billionaire and just like you've got more money than you could ever possibly use and the and like the only way to get like just a little bit more money is if you just like shit and just like fuck the planet up and like hey yeah. you can get two more dollars if you just like tear open the Great Barrier Reef and they're like, Yeah, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I feel that and you know, they say there's a statistic about, you know, billionaires and what they could legitimately spend and it's just like fucking there's no way but i want to say i challenge that idea because i could spend like a motherfucker i could probably run through a billion in maybe 10 years if i was given the chance maybe i would just buy shit but then again i would do shit like that though i would give back i would give back as long as it's in the budget of i'm still got like 100 million yeah. imagine if you can give someone like a dollar, and then all of their problems are gone forever. Dude, I would just make it rain everywhere. I would just carry money on me and be like, yeah, rob me. Here you go. Oh, ah, kill me, whatever. So if you're rich, give me money. I don't mean nothing to you. $40,000? I'm coasting at that point. People are back. Life is back on track. You won't even notice it's gone. Right now, people are at home like he's a fucking communist. (laughs) <laughs> say everyone's got to give all their money i'm just saying yeah if you got a bill break off a meal if you got a bill break off a meal. <laughs> that's that's a quote i say that but every time i try past a homeless person it's ice for it yeah fuck you i worked hard for this <laughs> yeah. bitch you, you don't could, exist <laughs> you could fucking uh twist us you could take a the same concept of your little sign holding and Twist it around a few times at fucking cash for gold. I'm on the way to Starbucks. I can't give you anything. No. <laughs> no bucks. I need them for Starbucks. Thank you. Come again. Starbucks sponsors this podcast. Yes. Shout out to the um, fucking my drink. I'm still like the Frappuccino guy. I'm not saying. Gonna lie. Dude, yeah. I used to have that shit instead of breakfast because I'm eight years old. Yeah. Dude, I ate a Lunchable for breakfast this morning. The fucking a pepperoni, lunchable. yeah, the pepperoni mm-hmm. pizza one. The nachos. Oh uh, yeah, those are. That's where it's at. Yeah, on a, those chips are so small though. But it's fire though, cause you feel like you got so many. I get the <laughs> psychology behind it, like you know what I mean. This little kid <laughs> thinks he just fucking. <laughs> Look at all my chips, bitch. <laughs> I'm gonna found out about the crackers. You know, the cracker, the ham, and cheese. I you still know? get those too. My dumb ass is like, you can eat these together. <laughs> I always wow. just ate the crackers and the ham and threw out the cheese. Oh, yeah. dude, the cheese was the best part, bro. That I'm ham is like ninety yeah, percent water and ten percent. It I says that on know. the. It says that on the pack too, doesn't it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> like, a lot of oh, so like preserved meat, like ham, like that has um like a nitrates in it, I think. And it's like a chemical link to cancer, so don't, don't eat the Lunchables with ham. Well, Just every, stick to the ones with nacho cheese and. Eh, but you don't think there's onions. preservatives in that cheese, though? Oh, there's preservatives in everything. Like literally anything you do will give you cancer. But that's like the one that I choose to follow. You know. See. I think birds calling gives me cancer at this point. Yeah. Have you heard that conspiracy theory that's like all the birds are, all the birds are drones or something? What? No, this is news to me. Elaborate. I guess it was like after 9/11, like there's no more birds, like all the birds are fake and oh, they're like cameras watching. They're government us. spies. Yeah. Dude, I mean, fucking it would make sense cuz pigeons. See, people sleep on pigeons. Just watch Mike Tyson tell you about them. Pigeons <laughs> Pigeons have been around longer than fucking us, and they've been literally like royal families. Wait, what does Mike Tyson have to do with this? Because Mike dude, Tyson raises pigeons. Yeah, like 
People, he's like, these he, are my fucking, fucking hated people so much. Hey, well, so I just much. figured out who he was like two weeks ago. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, the other day he was talking, he said something about, I was like, who's Mike Tyson? <laughs> You're definitely showing your age right now. Fucking, how, how old are you? 22. See, that's crazy that people, I, I believe it though. I believe people don't no, know. No, like I really should know who he is. I just had like limited media consumption as a kid, so oh. I missed a lot of stuff. Were your parents like, uh... I was, um, not allowed to watch Nickelodeon. So. What? Yeah. Are they super religious, or what was their no. purpose behind it? it they wanted you like, to... They wanted me to, like, not be one of those kids that's, like, glued to the TV and video games, which, like, I totally get. But that's great, yeah. I second that as well. I just think that there's a little bit of, you know, too much of a good thing. Or not enough of a bad thing. Like, you need to learn self-control. Yeah, so, too like, much of anything is bad for you. Yeah. Like, a hamburger every once in a while is good, but if you eat them motherfuckers every day for every meal, you just watch Super Size Me. You'll see what happens. That is gross. I hate that documentary. Yeah, but... Uh, Didn't his, like, dick stop working at a certain point? <laughs> yeah. Like, but the thing was, then they did the Super High Me. I guess there's not too much... Like, you it's can't cool. smoke too much weed, I guess. Unless you have schizophrenia, apparently... Don't smoke weed. It. What were we saying earlier about that? It. Um, new studies have shown. Well, basically, like, there's been like a trend upwards of more people getting diagnosed with schizophrenia, and some people are saying that's correlated with like cannabis consumption. But, I mean, it's all pretty much like just your opinion. I mean, if you have the schizophrenic gene already inside of you, but you're not a schizophrenic and you smoke weed, like you could be at higher risk, but. Um, it's really just about... Shit, so could watching horror movies, though. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, fucking seeing Chucky one time, and it's like every doll's coming alive, right? Like, I think it's just important to follow what your doctor tells you, whatever that is about that. Um, yeah. Yeah, but that's... I think for most people, still, even though weed's becoming, you know, it's it's progressing in legalization but it's still like a weird conversation to have with your doctor i guess like in places where it's illegal not for me though like i don't give a fuck but i'm sure for other people it's a little weird you know what i mean like because your insurance is also a key factor and it's like oh well, he's a drug user like you know what i mean which that's a whole different topic the ways around shit and how people profit off of it so but um I wanna go back on the the um Nickelodeon thing that you were saying and <laughs> cause no really though like uh it's like you you made a great point because yeah I, you should get a little taste of the fucked up shit and a little bit of taste of, you know, like being censored to something, I guess, when you're young because you don't have all the components developed yet in your brain to kind of, you know, figure shit out. But it's like, uh, yeah, I mean, it's like taking a, a, a kid out of school for being bullied. Like, that's part of the education, dude. Someone's going to make fun of you. You got to learn how to fucking react to it. Like, people are going to, like we said, why are people assholes? We don't know why, but people are going to be assholes. And you got to figure out how to deal with that shit. You know what I mean? Like, because if you're not prepared for it, you get in the real world and it's like, oh, you hurt my feelings, you know? Like, now I can't go into work because Bob's being a dick. Like, was that a, was the thing you were saying that kids that are either. Oh, about their parents? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it's really interesting that kids that have parents that are too strict or it's called authoritarian, so like dictator parents. Yeah. Um, and kids that have parents that are like, whatever, do whatever you want. And that's called permissive parenting have similar outcomes. Like they don't know how to regulate their emotions and they, um, lack self-control. So really the key is having balance. a balance, you know, like yeah. and some structure the and some freedom. And yang. Yeah. Because like, don't let your kid go to fucking Bonnaroo at 12. You know? Yeah. 
but probably not a good idea. Yeah, but let them know who Nirvana is, you know? Like <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah, honestly. So it's I just think it's interesting cuz parents that, you know, are really strict and controlling, they do so because they want the best for their kid. And then parents that kind of let their kids do whatever, do so because they want to be cool or they're, you know, have other things going on. But it's just like two opposite things that and it, yield the same results. And it's such a paradox because fucking they knew how they grew up. Like, why don't people learn throughout the process of them growing up how shit should go? Like, you know what I mean? It's like they stick to the script. Like, fucking, okay, my parents did this. Well, how much did you rebel, motherfucker? Like, you weren't fucking girls in your car at 16 anyways? Or they overcorrect. Right. Yeah, by going 100% the opposite direction. So. But what do you... All right, this is a topic because we were talking about it with the Kmart shit. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you feel about... Uh, what's it called? Corporal punishment? I guess, like... Capital. Like spanking? Yeah. Mm, I think that it models violence for your children. Like, if something... If you don't like something, that this is how you react is by being aggressive and... Well, so um, how do you correct a young child's, act, like, behavior when they can't... You can't just sit them down and explain to them why what they're doing is wrong because they don't have, you know, their frontal cortex is obviously not developed enough for okay. rational thinking, you know, and logic, so... Well, there's three lines of defense before you need to do positive punishment or corporal punishment like spanking you need to use positive reinforcement for the good behaviors like and then negative punishment which is like taking away things that they like like getting grounded um and then so just using like those types of strategies first but i mean there are some instances where it's totally warranted but i think if that's your only way that you discipline um your kid's going to grow up aggressive and like thinking that when they don't get their way violence is the answer because this I get is that what... I get that 100% but there is some truth to the fact of uh you tell me not to put my hand on the stove because it's hot and it's gonna burn me well I decided to do it anyways I put it on there it's hot it burns me I'm not gonna fucking touch the stove again yeah, so why do they need to get spanked on top of that? Oh, no, no. They, I'm, <laughs> I'm saying the burn was enough. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just saying, like... He's saying the spank is the burn. Yeah, oh, yeah, okay. the spank, yeah. Metaphorically speaking, like, um, quit punching your little brother Tommy or I'm, you know, spanking you. How's that feel? I think the, uh... That situation, but I think, I guess people's line of thinking is that the burn doesn't have to be physical violence against... Okay, Louis C.K. has this bit about it, about how you uh, have these kids and they just, you're their sole, like, provider in life. They look up to you and they care. And, like, you know, sometimes they'll fuck up. But he's like, these kids, they're just so much smaller than us and they don't know anything. And then we just, like, and then we just I've fucking hit them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's he's right about that, though. I agree with that. Even though I said, you know, the spanking thing metaphorically. Like, I, I'm not a, I'm not a father, so, like... I think when you have kids, it's different because you ha- like, you're put in that position. And me, I'm just sitting back from like an outsider's view, just talking shit. So I don't really know. But I mean, I think there's a case for both sides, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, like she said, balance. Maybe there's a right balance to having that type of punishment, I guess. Or do you say it should just be outright? Don't fucking spank your kids. Well, I mean, it's hard for me to sit here as a 22-year-old with no kids and be like, yeah, I would never spank my child, you know? Right. Because Did you get spanked? I just know, yeah. And okay. the reality is, like, you don't know what's going to happen when you're a parent. But I really want to try not to just because I know that you know what he was saying, they're small kids and they don't know anything and you're teaching them aggression and fear before they can, you know, really figure out what they think about what's happening. So I just, it's iffy to me. I definitely don't want to do it. I want to try everything else first, but I mean. Well, have you lashed out on 
people aggressively because you didn't get your way a lot? No, I mean, I'm not really an aggressive person. I'm pretty passive, but a lot of that... <laughs> well, I have, and I was spanked, so <laughs> <laughs> I'll just say, did then, you get spanked? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. I think there's a flip side of the coin, too, and it could be more common for girls, but when that happens, it kind of all just, like, turns in on ourselves, and we just, like feel like a little bit of fear and anxiety about the world and uh, I I definitely don't want to say oh it's because I was spanked because like I don't know so why. minor I guess but yeah and I definitely wasn't spanked all the time like one time I knocked over the Christmas tree because my parents <laughs> wouldn't let me watch the Christmas specials and I broke like half the ornaments and I threw a tantrum and like knocked the tree over and I definitely deserved a spanking like so I probably got spanked like 10 times in my whole childhood. Definitely not all the time. I, I don't know the answer either. I mean, there isn't really, but... uh, We're I, not in jail, though. None of us are in jail. Yeah, we're making it. We're doing pretty good. Yeah. I'd like to, I'd like to not spank. and uh, But at the same time, and I'm inclined with my ignorant brain, I'm inclined to like lean towards spanking is probably not the right answer. But at the same time, I don't demonize people that do. Yeah. Uh, I mean... That's, that's the key, I think, yeah, right? One, I mean, it's just... It's just all we've known for forever up until this point. At this point, we're as a society, we're just learning that perhaps it's not the right answer and it might be a better way. But, uh, well, at some point, somebody in their head, there was the first spanker, right? There was somebody who spanked their kid first. And in their mind, it was like, okay, I don't have a tablet to take away from little Johnny. You know what I mean? Yeah. Fucking, what do I do? Sit him in the corner? He's not responding to that. He likes the corner now. They became great friends. Like, fucking, he's still fucking shitting in the yard. Like, what do I do? I think it, uh, it comes from a place of, like, frustration. Uh, uh, no, okay, I will say that's the wrong way to spank yeah. a child. Well, I don't know. I just think it's a good point what Alec just said about People think there's a right or wrong, and that's the whole thing of most Everything. of the problems now. Yeah. Is like people are so like it's called dichotomous thinking, thinking mm -hmm. just like one way or the other. The dichotomy, yeah. Mm -hmm. Everything, like spanking, parenting, most of the things we talked about today are on like a spectrum. And if somebody is a little bit more towards the middle on their opinion that doesn't necessarily make them a bad person and today we're so quick to like equivalent like someone's moral compass with like their opinions on like social especially issues. political things right like and that's why fucking there should be a third party like okay you can you can believe in the right to bear arms because you want to protect yourself but you know, also, maybe you think that something like abortion's okay if some step or some father like incestually rapes a child and they get pregnant. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna have to carry that burden on for forever. You know, like, and you know, like my point is is that you should be able to have some liberal views and some conservative you know like the constitution is a great document and it protect it's a part of the reason why we can do this fucking podcast right now and just talk about shit if we were in china or some shit this would not be happening you know so there is some good in both sides that's why a third party that but libertarianism obviously fucking they had great ideas but they need a rebranding or something their marketing was shit why? Well, it's the thing. If you vote libertarian, I'm not saying you should or shouldn't. I don't give a shit. I'm a moron. I don't know anything about politics. But if you vote libertarian, they get 5% of the vote or something like that. I don't know. They get to be on the stage next next go around so you don't get just... These two. Yeah. Which, in the debate, which ends up being somebody talking about someone else's son and just a fucking... Honestly, it was like a roast. It was really like a roast, this debate that just happened. Like, they talked about all the issues, and the funny thing is, is nobody gave fucking answers. That's what I felt like the bigger problem was. was like, they were so hell-bent on just winning, like, literally, like, fucking wrestling. Like, 
I'm gonna get more fans. They're gonna love me more well, and fucking. I mean, yeah, you're right. It's crazy how just like how a single train of thought could not be followed to completion, like even a little bit. Um, yeah. But I mean, obviously, a lot of it from Donald Trump's side, because I, don't, I, I think he just like wants to maintain status quo at this point. Because unless yeah. like unless Biden gives some like killer, killer Braveheart speech, you know, like he he, he said before, he could shoot someone in the street and he wouldn't lose a single supporter. Uh, yeah, it sounds like a cult to me a little bit. It's a little culty, but I mean. The more scarier thing is, though, is, yeah, you're right about that. Well, fuck, how how much of the population is made up of that? You know what I mean? Because if he won, well, he didn't win the popular vote, you know, but if he won enough to win the presidency, how many people are still thinking like that and just, and just un, undying belief in... In something, and the funny thing is, is well, I'm not even gonna get in, get into what I was gonna say because it's just. You ever seen that South Park episode where, where uh, Garrison obviously like being Trump a metaphor, he's like, please, don't vote for me. I have no idea what I'm doing. You should vote for the other person. Yeah. This shit's insane. I will fucking burn this country to the ground. And people are like, woo. <laughs> It's the same concept of the Lemony Snicket books, dude. The Unfortunate Events. Did y'all read those? Yes. Put this fucking book down. It is filled with terrible shit. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Turner. Yeah, like fucking, yes. dude. I read those books fast as fuck. Like, that, I guess it's some something about psychologically that turns people on a little bit. Like, we like to be rebellious. We do. It's just something that excites us a little bit. Like People you know, can become addicted to like a rush of emotions, dude. just like they can drugs or alcohol or anything. Um, it just feels better. Not, it doesn't feel better, but it feels different to have some like crazy shit going on to some people, and they like that. And so a lot of people are attracted to... Trump saying he could shoot someone and still be president and be fine just because they like the thrill of it, which is really... Well, people are attracted to entertainment, and drama is entertainment. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like, I'm sure... I don't know what the numbers are, but I'm sure there was more people watching this debate than, than, you know, any of the other ones, right? Like, and it just sucks because... Nothing got accomplished. Literally, it was just entertainment. Mm-hmm. Hundred like, percent. I saw a poll, and it was like sixty-nine percent of people watching this are annoyed, and then it was like thirty percent were entertained. <laughs> so it's like it was just for entertainment, and the people that were trying to learn something were just like put off by it, understandably. Hmm. Wonder what that other one percent was. I don't know. I, have to get on Twitter. I can look at it real fast. <laughs> There's 1% of the people that were like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> that was the debate. That was, that was the debate. Like, yeah, my, I thought this was for center. <laughs> okay, so this is not, this doesn't even add up to 100, I don't That's think. That's how I said. No, okay. This is like more than 100. 19 plus 17 plus 31 plus 69. That's that's more than 100. But anyway, it says... Oh, God. <laughs> fake news. Hashtag fake news. Fake news. No, it's Dis- a, it's <laughs> disregard a that. poll. It oh. said 69% annoyed, 31% entertained, 19% pessimistic, and 17% informed. So I don't know if you could like check could be multiple some overlap. boxes. Yeah, you could yeah. probably check uh, more. That's probably what it is. Break it down a little pie chart. <laughs> the percentages, you know, like whatever. But yeah, dude. Honestly, um, I just want to see The Rock run for president. To be real, or Kanye, fucking, that'll be cool. I'm just Kanye. It, it works Kanye, better with this though. Kanye is unstable. Like he does not need to be president. <laughs> Kanye's not unstable. There's a there's a method to his madness every Kanye, time. 
It's just figuring out if it's for, if if what he's the shenanigans are for Kanye's self interest or if it's to. There needs to be a method people. to his fucking T-shirts. Those are a travesty. His website charges like hundred twenty bucks for something he like put together in Microsoft Paint. Yeah, but he fucking he's he's a billionaire off of it. Is he a billionaire? Yeah, off the Yeezy brand itself. He just signed an outrageous deal with Gap. What? Look, hey Google, what is Kanye West net worth? The net worth of Kanye West is one billion three hundred million dollars. See? Oh, and he passed up Kylie Jenner. Hey Google, what's my net worth? I can only share personal information once I verify your voice. Mm -hmm. Try going to assistant settings, hey, then checking your voice. That's okay. <laughs> She's not gonna answer to you. <laughs> <laughs> she only you answers to no me. Power here, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, listen, uh, the thing is with people that have ideas and are creatives is you're not supposed to get it at first a lot of times. A lot of times it's for them to go ahead and get into the position where they can employ what the fuck they want to. You know, like, for instance, when I started rapping, like, I got real big into uh, Christianity and fighting for some like and and i knew my lyrics were obviously going against like a lot of the values and shit yeah, of you know a christian belief but i was like if i do this i will get it's like jesus didn't hang out with fucking all perfect people he hung out with people that had problems he hung out with prostitutes and shit you know because people that need more of a moral compass are the ones that needed him so that's what he catered to so i was like okay well my whole plan was is if i showed them that i'm just like them and didn't act like you know holier than thou like a fucking christian singer or something like i'll get the people that need the message and then i'll deliver the message right so my whole point with that is is maybe kanye's got a little bit of that thinking with it you know Sometimes you have to, like, that's where probably the libertarians drop the fucking ball. Maybe you got to do a little bit of outrageous shit for marketing purposes, win over the people, then you start to make the world a better place. You know, there's something that I believe in. It's called the necessary evils. You know what I mean? Sometimes, like, shit, especially in a leadership role, you might have to make the call where you fucking have to assassinate three people but that assassination um, helped keep 300,000 people alive. So. What's your favorite Kanye album? Oh, shit, all of them. Really? But the college dropout, you know, obviously. Like, but, I mean, Kanye West, dude, he's just, he's just a genius with, like, all of his music. Like, it's just so... It's so crazy, and I think that where I it's funny because people critically hated this uh, this one particular album, but I knew at the time that it dropped it was ahead of its time, and I don't know what the what the status of people's opinions are on it now, but it was the Yeezus album, like I knew at that point like that that music that he made at that time, he was just thinking differently when he made it, and I guess that was. Around the time of where people just fucking, you know, started following trends so much, I guess. And if you weren't, if, like, at this point, if you're not in with the now, it's like, you're nothing. You know what I mean? Like, it's not worth shit. There's no stock in somebody being innovative anymore, I don't feel like. Because if this many people don't believe in it, then it's not gonna happen. And that sucks. Well... Is there anything else that uh, y'all were thinking about talking about? Your pee sitting down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> yeah. Would you use one of those cones if someone just like gave you one? Just like you know, at like, least try it out. But like, what if it what if it like overflowed? I don't know. I I can't. I deal with that. How the stream works. 
I deal with that sometimes too with like peeing into a bottle. It's like, you know. Yeah, that happened to me last time I peed into a bottle. You got precision like that? <laughs> Oh, just kidding. I was about to say, <laughs> like, yeah, I think I think some girls do though. I've, I, I mean, I've definitely seen a girl pee into a Sonic cup, which you know, it doesn't take much precision, you know, depending on whatever. But uh, you know, to get it into a hole this big around, you know, you gotta really be in touch with your, with your body, you know what I mean, and how it functions. But yeah, no, the fucking fill up thing though, it's like. You're just, you're risking it. Because I've done that. Never overflowed on myself. But as, I don't know about you, but when you start peeing, can you stop peeing? No. I mean, I mean, can, it's, but it's awful. It's so, it's like the worst thing, right? It's like worse than blue balls. Like, and that's a travesty within itself. Like, ladies, blue balls is real. Quit fucking teasing, okay? If you're going to do it, do it. If not, don't. Period. Keep on teasing how we how we fuck the patriarchy. No, no. see, <laughs> it all comes. There's a 360 for your yeah. ass. Cabbages right and pirates can and balls. It makes sense now. I get it. Yeah, female brains are so interesting. I love it. Y'all are. We think we know everything, but we really don't. Y'all are like actually a step ahead of us. I've resigned to ignorance years ago. Makes me makes me sleep better. <laughs> yeah right it does dude it does knowing shit sucks i hate knowing shit man yeah. knowing shit sucks is gonna be my autobiography title uh, yeah that's that's one for the fucking books right like god Is it causes no just posing i'm sorry just I'm, thumbnail I'm... yeah i you fucking do it too, hate huh? youtube thumbnails three, three two one <laughs> there we no, go. what's that one guy uh, reported the Nardwa? week where oh, he's no. like he puts a sandwich up he's like thumbnail he does it for so long for like 30 seconds he's like sorry guys he's so quiet you gotta watch this guy who reviews fast food people say what's that I name? look like him with no makeup so what? <laughs> call me down below if that if you think that's true oh god no do I, do I look like report of the week <laughs> she's playing more female psychology tricks don't do it <laughs> but well guys it's been real it has been